In the low country of South Carolina and Georgia, places for wildlife are becoming increasingly rare. Savannah National Wildlife Refuge is a vital sanctuary for vanishing wildlife. And the Savannah River is the lifeblood of the refuge. Located between growing urban areas in South Carolina and the industrial city of Savannah, the refuge covers over 29,000 acres. The refuge is part of the National Wildlife Refuge System with 100 million acres of lands and water in all 50 states and U.S. territories. Savannah National Wildlife Refuge is the largest of seven refuges in the Savannah Coastal Refuges Complex. Together, they span a 100-mile stretch of Atlantic coastline. Productive wetlands make up most of Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. Bottomland hardwoods, tidal freshwater marshes, freshwater pools, and salt marsh where the river water becomes salty. Small islands and fringes of hardwood forest provide important upland habitat. The story of man in the lower Savannah River Basin began over 10,000 years ago when nomadic Paleo-Indians hunted a variety of game animals and gathered assorted wild plants. After 1200 AD, Gwali Indians lived in permanent towns near the Savannah River. In 1733, the Englishman James Oglethorpe founded the Georgia Colony near the location of the present-day city of Savannah. Oglethorpe favored the site because it was surrounded by vast wetlands, which were a protective barrier against enemy attacks. But soon, these wetlands would serve another purpose. By the 1750s, rice was cultivated on large plantations along the Savannah River. By the mid-1800s, more than 13 plantations were in production within lowlands, now part of the refuge. Slaves and immigrant Irish laborers carried out the back-breaking work of building rice fields. Using fire, mules, and hand tools, they cleared thousands of acres of riverside swamps. Next, they dug hundreds of miles of canals and built elevated levees around the fields. Careful control of fresh water was the secret to successful rice culture. High tides from the Atlantic Ocean push a wedge of dense salt water under the river's fresh water. This wedge makes the river level rise and fall with the tides as far as 45 miles upriver. Using special floodgates called trunks, Planters harnessed the tidal power of the river to flood and drain the rice fields. On Christmas Day, 1864, General William T. Sherman's Union Army captured the city of Savannah. Sherman's troops soon entered South Carolina, burning a swath of destruction to the cities of Columbia and Charleston. The war, followed by several devastating hurricanes, ended commercial rice production along the Savannah River. But the legacy of rice lives on at the Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. The National Wildlife Refuge system began in 1903 with President Theodore Roosevelt's designation of Pelican Island as the nation's first National Wildlife Refuge. On April 6, 1927, the Savannah National Wildlife Refuge was added to the system as a 2,352-acre preserve and breeding ground for native birds. Acquisitions have increased the refuge to over 29,000 acres in South Carolina and Georgia. That's more than 45 square miles of land and water protected for wildlife. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the only agency of the U.S. government whose primary responsibility is fish, wildlife, and plant conservation, is charged with management of the Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. The Fish and Wildlife Service has restored 3,000 acres of former rice fields on the Savannah Refuge to benefit wildlife. 
Today, over 45 miles of rebuilt rice field levees enclose pools, which are flooded and drained to produce diverse habitats for waterfowl, shorebirds, wading birds, and fish. The wooden trunk structures, like those once used in the rice fields, continue to tap tidal power to control water levels in the 18-pool impoundment system. Within this system, aquatic impoundments are flooded for several years. This promotes plants with high food value and cover for wildlife. Aquatic pools also provide breeding habitat for birds, fish, amphibians, and countless invertebrates. These pools also attract the American alligator, the king of beasts on the refuge. The levees are favorite resting spots for gators. Here, the big reptiles sun themselves in spring, fall, and even on sunny winter days. Visitors are warned to stay far away from alligators. They can move quickly on land and should be considered dangerous. In moist soil impoundments, water is kept low most of the year. The moist soil encourages plant and invertebrate species preferred by wintering waterfowl, breeding birds, and other wildlife. In late fall, prescribed fire is used in the impoundments. The seeds from burned plants are deposited on the marsh floor and provide food for waterfowl. Desirable open areas remain when the burned marshland is flooded. In the winter, when water levels are low, invertebrates that thrive in the damp, decaying plant litter are concentrated and serve as a ready source of protein for birds. For over three quarters of a century, management of the freshwater impoundments has benefited nearly 25,000 ducks annually and countless other migratory bird species. Bordering the Savannah River above the refuge impoundments, bottomland hardwoods are a sanctuary for migratory birds. Colorful neotropical songbirds annually fly thousands of miles from their wintering grounds in Central and South America to nesting grounds in North America. The refuge bottomlands produce abundant insect prey and many layers of shelter for these migrants, as well as for permanent residents. When the Savannah River rises, bottomland is flooded. At this time, a variety of fish species migrate into these wetlands. The striped bass and the endangered short-nosed sturgeon are rare species that spawn on the Savannah River. Their very existence depends on a healthy bottomland hardwood ecosystem. From pre-colonial times, humans have impacted the Savannah River environment. Major changes began when bottomlands were converted into agricultural fields. Over the years, the river has been repeatedly dredged to accommodate larger ships. Past harbor deepening has allowed salt water to move farther upriver, killing more than half of the rare tidal freshwater marshes on the refuge. For 50 years or more, large dams and lakes upriver have altered the natural flooding cycle of the lower Savannah River. Many communities and industries withdraw river water for domestic and industrial use. Protecting natural resources on Savannah National Wildlife Refuge is an ongoing challenge. The Fish and Wildlife Service provides protection through active management and law enforcement. The service also encourages partnerships with businesses and organizations as a way to enhance funding and participation in programs. Many kinds of public recreation are available on the refuge. Wildlife observation is always popular. Hunting is permitted seasonally. Fishing is also permitted in the refuge waters. Laurel Hill Wildlife Drive offers excellent views of the wildlife impoundments and historical sites. Visitors may tour the one-way, four-mile route by automobile, bicycle, or on foot. The earthen levees are popular with hikers, but look out for gators. 
The Visitor Center offers colorful educational exhibits, programs for schools, and other services. Knowledgeable staff are on hand to answer your questions. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service will maintain this special place for the enjoyment of Americans for generations to come. Savannah National Wildlife Refuge, connecting two states for close to a century, truly is a waterway for wildlife.